Hey guys, uh, Gavin and the West Marchers team here. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, over some of the core events in West Marchers Year 1. Uh, we're not going to summarise all 80 plus quests, but quite a lot of them were important. So we're going to instead give a summary of some of the most important information the players should know at this point, based upon previous experience. Firstly, I'm going to outline the areas and geography of the map as discovered by the players so far. In general, under pinned messages right now. Although it may be moved to the Split River channel at some point, you can see the most updated uh, player map of the region. You can thank our lovely treasurer of GRP, Ashley, for that. Uh, I'm going to refer to places by the names on that map from this point on, so uh, it's a brief, brief description of each location and their direction from the town. Um, first up is the Grassy Knoll. It's an area the town is in, essentially. Um, a vast grassland with a river running right through it uh, that surrounds Loudwater. Funnily enough, the town gets its name as the crashing waves on both the west and east side of town create a crashing sound of water. Red Church will be touched on later. Um, to the north is the Creaking Woods, a fairly dense forest with light-colored bark trees home to simple game hunters from Loudwater, uh, skirt the outskirts of this uh, region, taking what they can. There is a fear among hunters of what lurks in the deeper regions of the forest that has claimed many curious hunters for as long as they can remember. To the south is the Southwoods. Unlike the forests to the north, which are given some of the sense of order by uh, their fey inhabitants, the forest to the south is wild and can be unpredictable. Large amounts of roots, vines, and thorns cover the uh, forest floor. In some places, they are thick enough to make passage impossible, and those attempting to do so will have great difficulty in injury from the thorns. The animals that live in the area often bear old scratches and scars to the foliage uh, are likely to be hungry and foul-tempered. We will get to the dragon and the tower in this region later in this video. To the west is the Battle Plains. This, the, uh, this area continues like the grassy knolls, but then leads to dangerous areas. Armies of ghosts haunt this region. Grass turns to trampled mud and piles of bodies lay on the ground. Moonshine Lake is also to the west, uh, a rather large lake with a multiple of beaches and different sections from different events that have occurred. We'll touch on this later too. Um, next is Obar to the east. An abandoned ruined settlement about the size of Loudwater. All of the homes have been empty for some time and are abandoned. Multiple monsters have occupied this town at one point or another and have been pushed out. Um, to the northwest is the Dewdrop Forest, the center uh, of most of the fey activity in the area. Dewdrop Forest is the most cheerful part of the forest. The birds sing in the trees, fey creatures are plenty are found in the Dewdrop Forest. Uh, constantly lit up by small floating lights, it smells like perfume. Uh, inside time is convoluted, making people feel like they've been gone for days. And they've only been gone a few hours. Um, northeast, on the other hand, is the dark woods. The bark of these trees uh, are such a dark brown that it could be considered black. The leaves are very dark green too, hence the name. It's the main way north by passing the Sladenbow and the Creaking Swamp. Sladenbow, uh, as mentioned before, also to the northwest, lies directly north of Loudwater, past the Creaking Wood, and neighbors Dewdrop Forest. It's a black, d uh, dark, deep, cold domain of hopelessly uh, tall ever-watching trees where unseelie fey and strange magic runs rampant. Also north is the Croaking Swamp. Don't know much about it yet. It's a swamp. Um, there's the Blighted Moor to the northeast. Uh, it's a twisted, flooded region with few areas of land to claim. Much of its inhabitants are aquatic to some degree and lurk in its thick soup-like water. Uh, there's the Broken Hills to the northeast as well. Um, it's where a couple of mountains have managed to split apart. We've recently had some trips to that region, but haven't seen much of it. Um, there's the night lightning pines, which are a bit east southeastish, a uh, valley filled with a uh, perpetual storm set around a broken manor house, um, marked on it as the Oni Mansion. Um, there's the mountains to the southeast, and the east, and the northeast. It covers uh, most of the stretch of Loudwater. Um, not being fully defined on the map yet, they're just a massive boundary. Uh, that was a lot of information, but uh, we are going to put the transcript of this video uh, underneath so you can follow along, uh, and if you ever need to refer back to that, you can. So, what has happened in year one? Well, one of the earliest jobs that was accepted was a journey into the Cretan woods to deliver some of the correspondence to Grandfather Meldrum. Who is Grandfather Meldrum? Well, he is a friendly local unicorn. Uh, he doesn't appear often, but it's believed that he lives in the Dewdrop Forest and he calls on adventurers when he believes that something terrible is occurring underneath his nose. 
quest directly after that had a group of adventurers uh, asked by Mr. Fonkin Ironhide, who is the resident blacksmith, to escort some of his wares to David Holt, which is a uh, small village on the Moonshine Lake. They accompanied the three carts, and during the night, uh, they discussed activity of a strange new monster in the South Woods. The wares were safely delivered, and while visiting David Holt, they observed a strange tower in the lake, with a mysterious figure watching them from it. Another the party decided to return to David Holt and investigate that tower. Um, and a fisherman and his wife had been reported missing, and when they discovered the tower, they discovered that an oblex, a type of slime that corrupts memories and replaces people, had absorbed the wizard who once lived there. Having defeated the wizard, they found the teleportation staff tower, uh, circle, apologies, at the top of this tower. Around the same time, travelling at the northeast, uh, some adventurers travelled to the Dark Woods as a region, and they marked it on their map for the first time. While there, they discovered a metal shack that led them underground, uh, and this shack contained many constructs to fight. A voice proclaimed from the box to be the great crafter Zook, and it told them that his box, as he called it, could move around the map, and that he would give them a riddle to find them again. Uh, after ejecting the players from this shack, the metal shack, now known as the box, and the players moved around the map underground to be found again later. During this time, at the same time as finding the box, a request was done by the High Priest, Aramis Wiseheart, to dispatch a party from town to fetch an important religious visitor who was coming to Loudwater based on recent events. They travelled up river through the dark woods to discover a part of the mountains and collect a man named Ostran Hiro, a visiting priest of the god Siric. This tricky individual enjoyed using his power to teach people lessons along the way, such as polymorphing some of the players into lizards. During a spat of disappearances from Loudwater, four adventurers track the missing people into an abandoned and run-down redstone chapel, the Red Church. Once owned by followers of the great god Helm, who will become important later, they rescue some of the missing townsfolk, but are forced to flee from the minions of a hag known as Baba Granoth. They lose lives in the process, and uh, spot a black mausoleum in the church grounds, but are unable to open it. In town, uh, during while some adventurers are out of the Red Church, something bad happened in town, a dangerous halfling individual escaped from the town jail. A party of adventurers, a reluctant advent, uh, request from the Invis Inquisitor Eintooth, who doesn't like adventurers as much, uh, they set out to capture this prisoner and return him alive. They eventually found him in the rules of Olbar, that city far away, uh, where he was attempting to ally some goblins to his aid, to aid him in his escape away from the region. Luckily, the criminal was recaptured, but not before an adventurer was killed in the process. A week after that, a local woodcutter vanished without a trace, and the, venture, the adventurers part, uh, travelled into the south woods to locate this woodcutter. They searched for a week, and were travelling much further south than intended, finding a small half-ruined tower in the forest, and a wood ward, basically a man made of wood. Uh, leaving the tower for later, they followed the wood ward, Wood to discover a dryad's grove, and they've been taking care of the lost woodcutter who had gotten injured in the woods. They now have an ongoing request um, for the hearts of fallen humanoids and fays because they can use these to create wood wards that will help to protect the forests uh, in the south. During this time, around about the same time, another group of adventurers went uh, to find some information. A particular adventurer notified them of a population increase of hyenas, which indicated that gnolls were rising in the area. They had set up an encampment in the grassy gnolls, and upon killing the gnolls in the gnolls, uh, one of them erupted into fire and started shooting fireballs at the players. Upon that gnoll's death, it was declared in a striking flame in the sky that Yinogu shall rise. A few weeks pass, and folk from the town start disappearing again. The guild immediately know where to look, sending adventurers again to the Red Church. They arrive and discover to their horror that the place seems to have undergone um, substantial renovation, courtesy of Webster's and Sons and Sons and Sons and Sons and Sons, the company. Um, according to uh, eyewitness reports, suddenly 
there was a black trail of blighting death arching away from the chapel to the north, from the now open Blackstone Mausoleum. The missing persons had been turned into living statues, and after smashing all of the unfortunate victims, our party had <coughs> finally cleared the Church of Corruption, and later hire a half orc to serve as gatekeeper and janitor. The uh, Trail of Devastation, is, as it is now known by our adventurers, is a 60 foot wide path of desecrated ground that runs from the Red Church to the Blighted Moor, stopping abruptly at the water's edge. All life around the trail withers and dies as the ground becomes vile, murky paste, and the trees twist, becoming petrified, creatures eventually turning into undead abominations. The party later returned south uh, after hearing and wanting to investigate that strange tower, and they found it to be an old elven watch post with the top floor open to the elements. The party discovered that the tower was occupied by a multitude of venture pygmies, basically like moss people, and a substantial amount of russet mould. During the fight to clear out the tower, a noble mastiff named Steve died in battle, and from now you may see that that is marked as Steve's Tower on your map, that is why. The second floor of the tower contains a teleportation circle, and the third had a giant beam which seemed to protest ma possess magical properties. By planting the giant nut, a beanstalk grown overnight next to the town, which stretches up into the sky and out of sight. Dr. Brakes, the resident alchemist, um, is puts in a request with the adventurers for Erebus Leaf is discovered in the bizarre black tunnels beneath the mausoleum of the Red Church. The adventurers start to hypothesize that the um, whatever it was that escaped might not have been locked in there as a prisoner, but as a guard. They unlock um, another riddle door, um, but see, after seeing an uncomfortable amount of spider webs filling the shaft beneath, just leave, deciding that it's a problem for later. Uh, with the Erebus leaf collected, Dr. Brakes concocts, concocts a new product, Erebus Tea, which aids in stealth and puts it on sale. The Adventurers Guild, learning about this beanstalk, decide to send some uh, adventurers to officially investigate the beanstalk, and found a cloud giant's house at the top among the clouds. No sooner, however, had the adventurers arrived as they were accused of stealing. It seemed that several valuable items had recently been stolen from the giant's house, and that there was evidence that humanoids were responsible. After convincing the giants that they weren't to blame for the missing items, they helped them restock their larder, since their golden geese were also killed during the robbery. It was soon discovered that the theft was carried out by Kaiju, a albino lizard folk and member of the Adventurer's Guild. He received a short prison sentence and was flogged through the streets for his crime. Inquisitor Eintooth used this as a public statement to show that crimes of adventurers would not go unpunished and that the town had become slow to trust the adventurers. A group of players planted a magic bean and teleported a pyramid from one of the most dangerous areas of West Marches, later found out to be the Arid Flats, something similar to a desert. They solved a puzzle to enter and descended into the tomb where they struggled against a complex trap losing two of their own before they could flee. The group of devout players ventured to uh, Sladenbo, where they were also beguiled, beaten, broken by a coven of witches attempting to claim the forest as their own. They also met the master of the Northern Fog, a winter legend named Varus, who warned for their trespassing. The gravekeeper of the Red Church uh, starts to complain that ever since the adventurers last went down into that mausoleum, there have been gross spider people climbing out of the hole, and he wants that to stop. They discover a hive of chitin that have been forced upwards by a fungal plague creeping up from beneath them. Uh, they make a deal with them and promise to find them a new home. Later, an adventurer who crafts items decided that they wanted to hunt an oni, uh, a magical ogre, in order to build some gauntlets of ogre power. Eventually, a party is formed, um, and after some research, they discover a haunted vi village known as Argenvarsted, 
and at the edge of, uh, sorry, that is at the edge of a valley forest. It seems to be perpetually shrouded in storm, with lightning striking at a single tower in the distance, and dancing between the pines as it spreads. They discover the, ruin, the tower is the ruins of Farshot Manor, and its heart, the state remnants of a vampire. His machine for dragging the manor into the Shadowfell and back as his private hunting ground, vaguely functional, and is used by the Oni that was actually living there to trap the party um, in, in, in this fugue plane. But they ultimately vanquish him and, and return stronger. Over this large period of time uh, that we've discussed previously, a small subsection of adventurers began to become infamous in the, ta in the town. Uh, they became known as the Helmites because uh, they came to worship Helm, as we've mentioned previously, the god of protection. So they were responsible for releasing potentially the prisoner from eyewitness reports, but they also burned away a small section of the south woods permanently in a fight, and you see this marked as the Dawn Scourge on your map. In other instances, they'd left allies to die. They'd also been seen consuming enemies' fleshes, making pacts with unknown entities. They claimed the Red Church as their own, relegating other religions elsewhere. And one of them even claimed to be the son of Helm himself. Helm, as a god, began to resent these fake paladins and cursed them with an affliction that required them to prove themselves worthy of redemption in order to receive their powers again. A lizard folk. A DM player character spend most of their time crafting a boat with the help of several players. Having completed the death boat made of the bodies of monsters and desecrated timber, the, uh, they sailed this boat to the north up to the Blight of Mur. This boat became known as the Black Pearl. Uh, here, the lizard folk DM player character challenged the chief in a duel and just managed to defeat him. The players played the chief. Uh, the DM player character then retired as the chief and granted the players the ability to call the boat for safe passage through their territory. During this period of time, it began to rain and storm quite heavily over Loudwater, and the commoners claimed to see these gargantuan shadows in the sky clashing at one another. A group of adventurers travelled to the mountains and climbed them to find a druid's grove of Kenku who worshipped a bird made of lightning and thunder. These druids, after a rather confusing conversation with the adventurers using their mimicry trait, helped the party defeat a rock, a massive monstrous bird that was threatening the town. With the rock dead and fed to the bird, who is known as the Avem the Tempestate, or the Mighty Tempest by the Kenku, the storm began to stop and Loudwater was saved. And one of the Helmites used this as an opportunity to redeem their soul in Helm's eyes. In an attempt to sell, save themselves, the Helmites appealed to Ostran Huro, the priest of Sirik mentioned earlier, to help restore themselves in Helm's eyes. With the help of Ostran and some other adventurers, a Helmite managed to purify the Dawn Scourge and killed an Arab Alip that spawned from a murdered child in the area. With these noble actions, the Helmites regained Helm's favour and broke the cursed condition. However, they sworn that they would never do anything bad again. I think you can see where this is going. The strongest adventurers at the time, Party of Six, entered the py pyramid mentioned earlier and found the secret entrance to the real tomb where they encountered Lord Xerxes II, slayer of the Azure Worm, master of the North Star, and Pharaoh of Seth. A fierce battle ensued, and only a gnome wizard escaped after screaming of their deaths as his mind descended into madness. Um, the adventurers are all thought lost as they bleed out in the cold floor of the pyramid depths uh, until a ray of light shined, a natural 20 was rolled, and they managed to stabilize themselves, healing each other and moving on forwards. Desperate for an escape, uh, from the, to, they freed Xerxes' wife, a snake woman named Mari, from her imprisonment and found a bean that held the pyramid in place, returning to Loudwater and stopping the pharaoh from unleashing his army upon the land. A long time after the box was previously found, uh, six months actually, a group of adventurers decided that it was finally time to follow the riddle given from the great crafter Zeke. They travelled to the Dewdrop Forest, and after an incident with some quicklings, uh, fast fairies pretty much, uh, made it inside. They faced challenges 
uh, separated from themselves, almost having to fight with separately one another, and they faced uh, massive constructs, but in the end they were successful and the box relocated once more. Before ejecting the players in the rude manner that the great crafter Zoot tends to do, he rewarded them with magic items specifically crafted for them. Clearly having not learnt their lessons, the players set out to the pyramid, but instead found themselves uh, the unwilling participants of an interplanar game, the Smackdown. The players just managed to survive and got some kind of award before they were teleported back to the material plane. A halfling managed to defeat the previous camp champion and claim his champion belt with the intent to return and defend his title next year. Uh, at the request of Grandfather Meldrum, the unicorn mentioned previously, a party of adventurers met him at the edge of the creaking woods and escorted him south to the Dryad's Grove for a special meeting. Uh, this meeting turned out to be an annual council of some of the area's good aligned count, uh, characters and creatures, including the matriarch of the Dryad Grove, a werebear, and one of the cloud giants. During the meeting, the group were attacked by some Abishai, which are basically dragon devils, and they seem to originate from the ancient, uh, distant Red Mountains. During this time, a brief moment afterwards, a biologist named Manfred Edelhurst arrived in Loudwater and, after providing some money, accompanied a group of adventurers to capture a beholder. The amount of money given here was quite a large amount, and so the adventurers were willing to take the risk. After a tough fight, the beholder was knocked unconscious and was marked by magic by Manfred in order to summon the body back to town for research. Unfortunately, Adventurer died in this tough fight. Manfred mentioned that he planned to move out of the town and he was working on building a mansion some 12 miles uh, out north from the town. The week after, Manfred played a lower rank uh, group of adventurers to investigate rumours of a creature trapped in a labyrinth in the Jurdok Forest. These turned out to be minotaurs that were trapped there by some fey trickery. They also worryingly found a locked room in the labyrinth with a lot of humanoid corpses in it, and it was never answered by the government. During this time, one of the good aligned creatures in the region helped a party of adventurers who were dealing with a quest to go and kill an owl bear. The party was attacked by were rats, however, the lawful good aligned werebear manages to come in and save the day uh, and save the adventurers. Now the adventurers guild were aware of the issue of lycanthropy in the south woods. Two hell knights had fallen under the dark influence of the pharaoh Xerxes. They were sent to the red church and battled against the fellow adventurers there. After defeating their once comrades and desecrating the chapel they fled north since adventurers had made multiple attempts to claim the 1500 gold reward for each of their heads, but have made no headway. The ward of Madame Vender, uh, the proprietary, uh, the proprietor, sorry, of the herbalism shop in town, began hearing rumours of a well-dressed man in search of him. The ward fled the town and a group of adventurers went to retrieve them at the Madame Vender's request. The party found the ward in the ruins of Allbar, where he was captured by the well-dressed man and his associates. This well-dressed man turned out to be a Cambion and fled from the scene when his associates were killed. In order to investigate recent reports of dragon sightings, which were brought up at the um, Druid and Weber meeting, the, a party of adventurers go south, talk to some more dryads and discover even more, an ancient fallen elven city that was where the south woods are now. They discover and venture bravely into the great dragon Saron Ganthrix's lair and are tricked by the dragon in disguise into slaughtering a great many of the dryads that live in the grove. Upon discovering this treachery and confronting her, they discovered that she just wanted an item that had been stolen from her to be returned into her possession once more. A group of ventures took the day off and went to one of Moonshine's beaches. However, between the yells of horrors, lawful good crabs, and dreaded Friday in his gun, they would never be the same. 
A group of adventurers hearing this about the Moonshine Lake decided to instead avoid that section and instead went to see the western battle plains just beyond the Moonshine Lake. They discovered an endless war of ghosts continuing in that region. The area was scattered with bodies and huge constructs wandered around gathering corpses from the ground. The party were attacked by sword wraiths, basically ghosts with a never-ending urge for war, who later forced the party to retreat back to Loudwater. Hey Jack. Hi, this <laughs> was when I started being a DM. Um, uh, the seventh side of the Moonshine Lake exploded. Uh, and adventurers travel there to see it covered in fire. Part of the lake itself had even been turned into mist and uh, lit up. The fire elementals and azes, magma methods, magmans, you get the scene. Um, the players eventually uh, defeated them and sent them back where they came from. The fire then calming down. Uh, analyzing some fungal samples brought back from Theron Galtronix's lair and the depths of the mausole mausoleum, Dr. Ita breaks, uses, um, uses them to create a potent potion. When imbibed, it caused vivid hallucinations, as if one had grow joined a myconid meld, a group of sentient fungus people. The party and her subjects shared a vision of the fall of a myconid spore ship to um, Gift Yankee, um, tall space goblin, uh, guarding a crash in the tiers of Saloon, the asteroid belt around the planet. This, they realized, is what came to destroy the elven city of Evenmorn, and allowed Sarangantharix to move in as master of the Southwood. A group of adventurers then decided to chase down the trail of devastation left earlier in. Um, heading north, they uh, initially stumbled across a uh, spectral farm, or as they later found out, it was not real. They came across uh, the remnants of a ritual site, finding a banshee within. Um, and after killing the banshee and purifying it, the farm disappeared. Tracing back on themselves, they came uh, across a ditch leading to what was then called the mausoleum. It led through several cave systems before coming to an annex labeled the Upper Depths. Some adventurers still decided to go past this barrier, um, leading to one adventurer dying, um, and then deciding to come back later when they were strong enough. Uh, during this time, a cleric covered in poison with his skin rotting off arrived at the south gate of town. A group of adventurers traveled south to investigate this, uh, based on the notion that he had a note mentioning shadows that were chasing him. They travelled south, so south that they were in the shadows that cast off the Red Mountains, and they discovered uh, the friendly werebear again being killed by a set of shadows that were later revealed to be shadow demons. The party saved the werebear, who then revealed his name to be Fongrock. However, the party touched a bead that was on the ground, and when that happened it began to flash in blue and red energy, soaring off to the Red Mountains that they were above, partly fearful of what they done and decided to go back to Loudwater. It was discovered that um, Baba Grana, who was in control of the Red Church before it was overtaken by the adventurers, and the Coven of Witches, who were in the swamps to the north, were one and the same. And at Dr. Brakes' request, uh, a party raid Baba Grana's personal herb garden in Sladenbau so that he can add more to his shop inventory. That goes as well as anticipated and will definitely come back later. A group of adventurers return to Orbar, as is their want to do, uh, to investigate an adventurer's family's potential reappearance. The adventurers were shocked to discover that the town had been all occupied by the family, but some of them were intellect devoured. Their head mind had been replaced with instead a monster. Uh, and an Alhoon, which is a type of mind flayer that uses arcane magic. This Alhoon's name was Kahal Ghoul. Upon his defeat, the Alhoon transferred his soul into a ring of mind shielding, basically a ring that could contain his thoughts, and promised, that the, he promised the adventurers that he would lead them to the actual mind flayer colony in the region when he considered them capable of killing them. He claims that this is from a point of resentment to his kin, but the guild are not keen to trust him as of yet. 
As the cloud giants continued to search for their previous stolen property, they eventually heard word of an auction taking place in Daggerfoot, a big city on the Sword Coast, far away from West Marches. Some of their possessions were apparently being auctioned there. With the assist of a party of adventurers, they travelled to Daggerford using a large cloud-type vehicle, and they entered the auction to retrieve the items. The other bidders soon turned against them, but the adventurers were victorious and returned the stolen items to the cloud giants. The giants left shortly after this, detaching their house from the top of the beanstalk. However, the beanstalk still remained. Enraged by the theft, I told you it would come back, and desiring the real estate, the hags form an army of blights and attack the Red Church. Two parties are formed to simultaneously defend the church and cut the head off the beast. Two hags named Rickety Zilla and Black Sally ride their steel ball through the outer wall and cause much damage. And, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm going to read this again because I'm a moron. Uh, but are defeated for after Black Sally is slain and Rickety Zealous escapes through a network of routes. Simultaneously, Team Spank, as they were called, uh, attack the Hags of Blight spawning ground, finally killing Brabagrana herself and leaving the Gravekeeper to rebuild and find some way to move this damn great ball out of his graveyard. After this, Saren Ganthrix sends adventurers into the Red Mountains to find the gemstone that was stolen from her by fiends. They discover a test in progress, an oinolot, a hired scientist disease spreading, it's unpleasant, um, <laughs> had been hired to test a new bioweapon, a rot troll created with this gemstone, the Toxicant Bolus. They destroy it, the Oinoloth escapes, and they retrieve the gem, which Saren Ganthrix takes from them and uses to give herself power over fire and acid, as well as her current poison. Uh, during this time, uh, Manfred finally moved out of Loudwater into not a mansion, but instead a portal that then had a mansion in a demi-plane. He hides this with a stone shack. He invited some adventurers over for a nine-course banquet, which in fact was quite highly received. The players returned to something they'd labelled the Wraith Mount, something they'd found earlier on to be a uh, hill with some slab over it, but when approached, uh, a number of wraiths and spectres and undead rose up. One wave of adventurers went to tackle this mound, finally trying to clear it of the undead. Um, unfortunately, they were not powerful enough, and one of them fell. They later then returned with a different party, attempting to take this mound down once again. An adventurer did fall, even with one of the strongest adventurers in the, in, in the guild, but they were brought back at a cost. Pro moving forwards, they eventually got down through this, past this slab of rock, finding a sacrificial altar boat beneath, and inside released a powerful demon forming a pact with one of the players. Once again, uh, the box reappeared, this time in the domain of Saren Ganthrix. And the party cleared the box, killing some of the constructs again, receiving a reward from the Great Crafter Zeke before leaving. Saren Ganthrix herself appeared before the party before they were able to travel back to Loudwater, use, making an example of two adventurers who had failed to aid her in recovering the toxic and bolus in the past. The adventurers then decided to return to the tunnels beneath the Blighted Path. Fighting their way in, getting to the Upper Depths once again, they moved past that um, annex and finding the Bodak which had killed one of the earlier players. They found it and had several Will-O-Wisps fighting their way past them to now finding um, almost like an aqueduct of blood flowing th uh, through the next room. And to either side were statues. Within these statues there were Dwergar, held restrained constantly drained of their blood before being healed again. The players attempted to put them out of their mercy before moving forwards, fighting these statues as they went. Eventually coming to another annex, same the residing depths, and a magically sealed box. And as the players all stepped around to try and open it, it revealed a bone claw, 
that now resides down there, frightening the players that decide to enter. They did eventually defeat it, opening the box, finding the remains of an old wizard named Van Haver. Manfred Edelhurst again requested the aid of a group of adventurers as his shack that was hiding the portal was being knocked down every night. The adventurers were surprised to find a revenant, a man that should be dead or not belong in the plains, but instead was here, named Robin. He had been leading dinosaurs from a far place, far, far north to the north, sorry, to the grassy knolls, in order to tempt a Tyrannosaurus Rex that was hiding from him in the Dewdrop Forest. As bizarre as Robin's plan sounded, the party decided to attempt to go with him to find this Tyrannosaurus Rex, eventually finding it and killing it. The corpse was given to Manfred for biological research, and the party returned to Loudwater with newfound knowledge of this timeless place to the north that is currently left undiscovered. Robin returned to his home plane in peace. Well, more recently, Sharon Gansrich requested adventurers come to help her fight off demons that have been coming down from the mountains. Little did they know that an enormous alkalis, a sort of moss portal generator, had been slowly forming a portal to the abyss across the entrance to her lair. And they were forced to destroy it before it released even stronger demons from within itself. Fortunately, as they discovered then, the Lady of Vanum rewards her vassals handsomely. A party then did return to the holes of the bone claw. They ventured past where the Bodak once lay, finding willow wisps floating peacefully uh, and moving past them. Where the Dwerger once lay uh, drained of their blood, they found one was still there, the statue misfunctioning, and over it two creatures, two lonely creatures, stare, stabbing at that one Dwerger and enjoying in his torture. Finally, letting him free and killing these two creatures, they moved forwards once again, this time entering the residing depth where they came across a creature that walked reality, showing them the places that they found most safe, but using it to its advantage to separate them and make them uh, alone, named a Balthanis. They did manage to frighten it away, being released to venture further down, and moving past a couple of puzzles, eventually came to an area um, with several trap doors. Um, after being weakened by these, the bone claw decided to show itself, um, and after dealing with the bone claw, the party decided that they needed to leave, returning when they were more fit to attempt this again. During this time, leading on from some of the previous activity in the Red Mountains, the party decided to investigate the rumor of, rumor of demon and devil activity in the nearby mountains, and found armies of both devils and demons vying for control of the mountain's peaks. Uh, which seemed to be linked to a portal above the mountain that cycles between the Nine Hells and the Abyss, the home of the devils and demons. During this time, Manfred informed the guild of an artifact that may be available to recover on a specific day of that week. A party was hired and ventured to an ancient tomb. They discovered within it complex traps that were protecting the book. They managed to counter the trap and recover this book, which was classified as some artifact. The party, slightly scarred by the effect the book had had on their mental states, gave the book to Manfred, seeing him as an intelligent man who would be able to keep the tomb safe. On a religious pilgrimage, unrelatedly, a group of adventurers go far south, past the lands of the Green Dragon. What they find is little more than ruins, a dead civilization, a degenerate race, and the promise of further adventure. During this time, a lower rank party travelled to the Boxer's new and current location in the mountains, not the Red Mountains, but the more neutral mountains to the east. They succeeded in the Boxer's trials, but did not get any further than the previous group due to their lower rank and power as adventurers. The Great Crafter Zook rewarded them anyway, but asked that they should tell their higher rank friends to come back and participate in his trials. Although the Great Crafter Zook saw them as weaker, this may have been proven by the fact that one of them went down and died in the box. The Great Crafter Zook allowed them to take their body back with them, and they were able to bring it back to the Kenku Druids that live in these mountains. 
Genku druids, with the help of another druid, an adventurer, aided in participating in a reincarnation, making this adventurer turn from a halfling to a tiefling. They said that they could only do this once in a cycle, and this definition has not been clarified by the Genku. A group of adventurers decide that they must avenge their fallen comrade. He had been possessed by an intellect devourer during the quest in uh, that dealt with the Alhoun. They tracked this creature and its new body to the Lightning Pines and discovered that the devourer had been a scientist of sorts, using their new form to conduct research into necromancy through lightning. After a difficult fight, they slay the beast and its minions, free their friend's soul, and it is reincarnated into the form of a spirit of lightning, released into the storm. A group of adventurers, some of the higher tiers, dis did decide to go back down into those depths. Moving past the will-o'-wisps and flaming skulls, they eventually came to what they knew to be the Balhanna Slayer. Expecting it to be the same, there were some twists. It now showed what they considered their greatest fears to them and played with the minds of those adventurers that went down, having them each fight against their fears. Every adventurer did defeat it, moving uh, forward, but in its teamwork, it also had the bone claw around. The, the players fought the bone claw as well as the, these, these summoning, summoned fears, um, but were too, un too weak to fight the Balhanith itself as it finally showed itself, forcing them to retreat once again. On the other so side, some new adventurers took on the role of clearing out a war brigade of infected orcs and goblins that Ranger Dillon had discovered. However, once they dealt with this war band uh, in the Creaking Woods, the same Ranger revealed himself to be a Moretzi, a creature known for eating corpses to take on their appearance, and thanked the players for bringing him his new meal. During this time, a group of some of the lower rank adventurers, the Porcelains, uh, managed to explore an old fortress in the, Kreeking, in the Kreeking Woods that was occupied by some Kenku bandits. However, after defeating the Kenku, they did not explore the rest of the fog, so its contents remains a mystery. Very recently, a party of adventurers journeyed to the Blighted Moor uh, to parley with the Lizard Folk, which we then said previously was now achieved by this Kaiju. Following an appearance and an audience with him, uh, they decided that they did not like the civilization and murdered the high priest of the civilization before fleeing, leaving their boat and were required to pay the town guard uh, for a replacement boat for the one they'd hired. Since then, Kaiju, in an act of aggression against the adventurers, has revoked all access to the tribe and the infamous Black Pearl, as mentioned previously. Upon a new plague of worms arriving at the Red Church. Uh, screaming, Free me! Uh, a party is formed uh, at the request of the Gravekeeper and venture north, discovering a hive of enormous insects, Kruthrix, underground, and at its heart, a druid, the old protector of the forest, who had been trapped in a ritual by the hag their lingering magic still holding them in this, him in this, this place. They managed to pry the old free of the hive and place him in the red church. To properly free him, they must venture once more into the hag's iron ball, killing the last one alive and reclaiming some of his treasures. The adventurers very recently, recently noticed a worrying rise in gnoll and hyena population in the dark woods. Remembering the previous incident with the gnolls, a higher rank party was sought to deal with it. These gnolls appeared tainted by necrotic energy, and once defeated, the situation only got worse, as a giant tree in the fort they were occupying became a pillar of fire, which spawned two flins, demonic gnolls. An avatar of Yinogu, the demonic lord of murder and madness, appeared in the sky, thanking the party for his return to the material plane. The fight resulted in the death of a popular adventurer, the half orc grave uh, tender. And as the chaos subsided, the party returned to Loudwater in the morning, vowing to keep a watchful eye out for more gnoll activity. 
The Bank of Loudwater, run by the illustrious Normish Glittergem family, requested a number of representatives from the Adventurers Guild to show their faces in collaboration for the grand reopening of the bank. The banquet, or of course banquet, hey, uh, was followed somewhat when a prestigious wizard was murdered during the night, all blood drained from him. Apparently, the renovations had opened a forgotten Merculite? Is that how that's pronounced? Merculite. Merculite, there we go. A knowledge crypt, uh, releasing what's known as a mind drinker vampire trapped within. Similar timing, uh, winter had came early to uh, West Marches. There had been gusts of icy winds coming from the north, uh, and they didn't. Uh, the guild did not like that, not out of turn. It reminded them of when the heat came early with the fire on mountains before. So some adventurers ventured north, going across the broken plains where they found uh, an icy city of spires lifting the ship they earlier discovered there into the sky. Um, first venturing forwards, they tried to do, um, find the source, and they found various water elementals, as well as the princess of them all, all Hydra, sitting in the top. Unable to get past her entire army on their first attempt, those same adventurers ventured back a week later, this time using a brilliant distraction to keep her army out of the way. They climbed up the ice spires to the ship where they fought the princess herself, defeating her, one player uh, dying in the process, but quickly being revived as some adventurers dropped the ship down to get to the corpse, destroying the elemental knob that kept her here in the meantime. On a quest recently to clear the southwoods of its lycanthropy problem mentioned a long time ago, the friendly werebear Fongrock was killed. His death brought upon the end of evil and good lycanthropes from the southwoods, now cleared from the curse. Finally, up to now, a group of adventurers travelled with Ostran Hiro to the western battle plains to investigate the endless eternal war that took place there. They discovered that the cadaver collectors, these huge constructs that were there, were actually a force of good, attempting to purge the battlefield from the war by collecting the corpses and freeing their souls. They also discovered that whatever is causing the endless war is at the centre of the plane, and they must get stronger to manage to reach there. Oh, and circus. Oh, and a circus. Uh, thank you very much. I hope that video was informative. It should be at the length it is. Uh, as I've said before, a transcript will be in the description for people that need it. Or if you just want to go over some things, we went over quite quickly. Uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>